After a few leaks, Huawei has announced the Mate 9 here in Munich, Germany. Sporting a design that's familiar to previous Mate devices, the Mate 9 brings a series of improvements. But is it the handset to fill the hole left by the Galaxy Note 7? What's going on everybody, it's Nirav, and this is our hands-on with the Huawei Mate 9. The Mate 9 doesn't have a curved screen, and it isn't Quad HD, with Huawei instead opting for a flat 5.9 inch display of full HD resolution, which meets 96% of the NTSC color standard and has a high contrast ratio of 1500 to 1. Although QHD resolution would have helped, the display is still quite pleasant to use and offers deep blacks and vibrant colors. Like most other flagships, the handset also comes with a blue light filter, which is designed to protect your eyes from harmful blue light that's most apparent in dark conditions. Under the hood, the Mate 9 is powered by Huawei's new Kirin 960 chipset, which is made up of the latest Cortex-A73 architecture, along with Mali's latest G71 GPU, and an i6 co-processor for better sensor management, which Huawei says allows you to play Pokemon Go for longer. The Kirin 960 is partnered with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage in the regular version, and while we can't yet confirm Huawei's claims that the Kirin 960 is the fastest processor in a smartphone right now, the Mate 9 certainly shows no signs of lag. To ensure smooth performance even after several months of use, the Mate 9 uses a machine learning algorithm to analyze user behavior, optimize the user experience, and allocate resources according to the way you use your phone. As a result, Huawei claims the handset is up to 50% faster than previous devices, and after 16 months of simulated usage, it is up to 80% faster than rival devices. The Mate 9 is powered by a 4000 mAh non-removable battery that comes equipped with Huawei Supercharge, which has an intelligent charger that, combined with constant battery monitoring on the device itself, is designed to avoid any unwanted overheating situation. Although it's not compatible with Qualcomm's Quick Charge, the Mate 9 can be fully charged in 90 minutes and can be charged to 50% in just 30 minutes. While you get a car charger included in the box, there are no plans to launch a supercharged compatible battery pack, however. The camera picks up from where the Huawei P9 left off, with a second generation Leica dual camera array that's made up of a 12 megapixel RGB sensor and a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor. The camera features optical image stabilization in the color sensor, f2.0 aperture, hybrid autofocus, and 50% smaller file sizes for 4K video. Like other dual camera devices, there's the ability to capture images with a bokeh effect, but the Mate 9 also allows you to take a picture and then change the focus after you've taken the image rather than the other way around. The ability of the dual camera to capture depth information allows you to set the aperture to as little as f.095 or as high as f13, and making these changes either before or after you've taken the shot is really straightforward. The camera also comes with a series of other filters and options, including a pro mode that offers enough manual controls to keep almost all users happy. The Mate 9 is the first handset to run Huawei's new EMUI 5 interface, and although it is visually similar to previous devices, Huawei says it is their biggest refresh ever. A lot of previous features such as knock-knock, customizable home screens, and fingerprint gestures also return, but there's a few differences as well. The first is that there's finally the option to add an app drawer in the settings, which is ideal for those who prefer the familiar Android experience as we know it. The second is the ability to switch accounts by enrolling different fingerprints to each account, and coupled with a new privacy space, it means that your entire family could use the phone, but data would remain secure to each individual. A feature that aims to solve a long-standing problem is App Twin, which duplicates one account apps such as WhatsApp, WeChat, and Facebook, so you can use them with two different accounts on the same device. EMUI 5 is based on Android 7.0 Nougat. Multi-window is supported using Nougat's native feature, but you can also swipe your knuckle across the screen to access the split screen, although this doesn't always work. EMUI 5 essentially seems to be a compromise, where Huawei has tweaked the parts of Android it feels necessary, rather than aiming to overhaul everything like other OEMs do. Alongside the Mate 9, Huawei will also announced a limited edition Porsche design Mate 9 here in Munich, and while we are bringing you a separate look at that, I can say it's the curved QHD handset with 6GB of RAM that we were all hoping the Mate 9 would turn out to be. What do you think of the Mate 9 and EMUI 5, and do you plan to buy one? Let us know in the comments below, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you liked this video, and stay tuned to androidauthority.com, as we are your source for all things Android.